Hey everyone, it's Benny here, and in this video we're going to be talking about... Well, first let me say this. This is my Minecraft Computers Explained series, and this is the final episode. So, if you've never seen the series before, then seriously, just go back to the first video. There's no reason, really, that you should be watching this if you haven't seen the rest of it, unless you just want to learn about AOUs, of course. But, um, yeah. So anyways, this video is going to be about the AOU, and we're also going to go over how all the parts end up working together. So, let's talk about the AOU. So, I hinted to this in the first video, but the AOU is like an office building. Because we've had this big, giant analogy system building up all, all over the entire series. We started with the, a ram, which was like bus stops. Buses which were like buses, they carried information to the bus stops. And then we could get off, off from the buses on the bus stop and get onto buses from the bus stop. And then we could ride the buses to anywhere it wants in the computer. We had ROM. Those were like the old ladies at the bus stop. They're just sort of there. No one really knows how they get there, but they're always there. And we had registers, which were like taxi. These because it just took information. It, it bypassed the whole busing system, allowed information to go just to where it needs to be. And, oh yeah, and there were, of course, decoders, which were like phone books, because you could look up something in the computer with the phone book and just set, use that to send information directly to that one part of the computer. And, um, that's basically the analogy. So, oh yeah, right, and there's program memory, which is like the boss. It tells this huge virtual computer city, hey, this is what you need to do, or bad stuff is going to happen. And then this, the whole computer city does it. So that's basically what we've gone over so far. So it's the AOU is like an office building. Now the AOU is hooked up to the registers. And what the registers do is they hold all the information the AOU needs to process. A at least these registers. So what the AOU does is all the information that's com coming from the registers, it's going to work, going to work in the office, going to do whatever it is. There's the boss is going to tell, hey, this is what you need to do today using these two commands. And then the uh, people in the AOU are going to say, all right, fine. And then pass out wh what the boss asked for right here. So that's pretty much what the AOU is in analogy land. And it's a relatively simple device, believe it or not. So what the AOU is in outside of analogy world is... It's just a device that does all math and logical functions. And so I'm, what I think is kind of surprising is it's one of the most important parts of a computer, yet it's also one of the simplest parts. So all an AOU does is it ends up having several sets of gates. All the inputs from the registers are plugged into the e respective A and B inputs of every single gate. And then the gates are going to do their processing, They'll use the muxers to determine whether the information gets out. In this case, our gates are just a subtractor on top and an adder on the bottom. And uh, that's about it. I mean, it's honestly, it's not that... <laughs> yeah, it's just... Mm, it's not that bad at all. And, um, yeah. It's just not that complicated. I'm sorry, there's... The AOU is one of the simplest parts of the computer, so that's really the AOU in a nutshell. <laughs> and now we're going to go over how this whole thing all comes together. So I have a question that could have a very, very complicated answer to it. What is the point of a computer? Any ideas? If <laughs> Now you could go into a big philosophical debate about Oh, what a computer is, but think about what you do on a computer. You might have a schedule, like say, okay, I use a computer to do, I, I go on YouTube, I go on Twitter and Facebook, and that's about my whole computer life. And that's fine. You might say, okay, I, there might be another person who says, okay, I use my computer to do all my, I work and work, and uh, I have these big advanced programs to do these really complicated tasks because I have a tough job, maybe I'm no, let's say an engineer or something that requires a lot of of calculation, something that requires a bunch of just a bunch of information to do. 
I don't know. I just sort of pulled that out of the sky. So, yeah. What if you were the hat person? Those are two people using computers for two completely different reasons. One's just doing general social networking and a bit of entertainment. The other's doing some really complicated engineering stuff. And that's the point of the computer. The point of the computer is that it can be very easily set up to do anything you c just pretty much yeah anything that is the whole point of the computer so here is how it can do that computers work on the information theory the theory that information can be manipulated to represent anything that the user or designer chooses so in this case our computer just processes numbers because we chose not to make those it mean anything other than numbers. We could have said, hey, these wires don't mean binary. These mean some weird letters in this system, and we can use this to process letters, and all of a sudden the computers turn into a word processor just from us saying that. And it, it just works like that, too, even though it might seem like, wait, wait, you ca that just can't work just from saying it. You're going to have to change something. No, not really. That's one of the magic things with computers. It contains tools for processing different information in theoretically any way you want. It's going to be able to change that in a predictable pattern, and it can also remember it. And those two key things allow the computer to work. And I know this probably isn't the easiest thing to understand because it's just, it is a bit complicated in, g in general. But just stick with me for a moment. So, we have information going to the computer. The computer does processing with it, typically in the AOU. And the computer can then remember that in RAM. It can get information for, and that we will always remember forever from ROM. And it can know what to do for unprogrammed um, memory. And all these four elements working together er, produces whatever result you want. So, program memory. It sends information to the computer that tells it what it needs to do. Ooh. ROM. It has information the computer holds forever. It can do whatever it wants with that information. The ALU. It processes all the information, does all the fancy functionality. And RAM. It just remembers the information so the computer can use it some other time. And RAM, is, again, is like short-term memory because you don't need to know it forever. And that, in essence, is basically the computer. So, thank you, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this series. And, oh yes, of course, the decoder is the phone book. It lets you look up things. Never forget about the decoder. Those are very important. <laughs> Sorry, I ran a bit of a side note. So, anyways, thank you, everyone. I will see you in the next video. Or, actually, I should rather say in the next series, because this is the end of the video series. But, hey, anyways, thank you. See ya.